put my very favorite story on healing that Jesus did. Fits my personality perfectly. Let me read it to you. It's in John 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. Everybody say, from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he'd be born blind? Now, stop for just a second, and let's just read that slower. Master, Rabbi, who sinned? This man's born blind. Key, born blind. Who sinned? This man or his parents? And Jesus answers, it was not this man who sinned, nor his parents, but it was for the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as this day, for a night is coming when no one can work. And while I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spit on the ground, made clay, put the spit, spittle in the man's eyes, applied it to clay, put it in his eyes, and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. It's translated, it means sent. And he went away, washed, and came back seen. Now, help me. What does Jesus have to do to heal somebody? Speak a word. He just has to speak a word. What did he do to this guy? He spit on him. <laughs> have you ever thought of that? I mean, you can imagine this guy. In fact, uh, I, think it's, um, I think it's in the book of John, uh, the book of Luke that repeats this story. And the guy's yelling, you know, son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples are like, be quiet, shut up. You know. And Jesus is like, no, no, bring him here. And Jesus, in, in that account, says to him, what would you have me do? Hello, I'm blind. <laughs> what would you have me do for you? And the man said that I would receive my sight. Can you imagine the man... This man has been born blind. He was born blind. He's never seen color. He's never seen, he doesn't even know the concept of color. But probably, it probably his, his hearing is probably heightened. His other senses are probably heightened. Are you with me? People who are blind typically have, have they, they typically make up for some of their blindness with other perceptions. So, so here's this man, he can't see a thing. And he, he hears people, you know, worshiping Jesus, calling out to Jesus, and he's like, is that Jesus? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This Jesus, I'll bring him here. What would you have me do? That I receive my sight. Now, now he knows Jesus is somewhere right here, because he can hear him. And somewhere around where the master is, he hears <laughs> Now, Now, you could imagine, I understand that this is subjective. But if I'm the guy, I'm not thinking, the son of God is about to spit on me. <laughs> he hears, and it seems to be coming from the vicinity of the person who just said, what would you have me do? And the next thing, he feels loogies. <laughs> Two loogies running down his eyes. Now, now, it gets worse. He's not healed. He's still blind. He's got dirt with loogies running down his face. And Jesus goes, okay, go wash in the, the, the pool of Siloam and you'll, you'll see. Well, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about the geography of cities. That, I don't know if that was like right there or if it was like six miles, you know, I, I don't know. But I just picture this man, he's walking along, you know, feeling his way, I don't know if he's got a, somebody helping, whatever, and, and there's loogies running down his face. You know, it's like worse than mascara, right, ladies? He's just got <laughs> dirt, loogies running down his face. And people are like, what happened to you? He's like, Jesus healed me. <laughs> I mean, why not just say, be healed? I mean, why all the drama? <laughs> and he, you know, you know the story, he washes and, he, and he's come back seeing and he can see. And I'm reading this story, this is during my wrestling. I'm reading that story. I really like the story. I don't know why, it's just, <laughs> I like weird stories. I'm like, it just makes me feel normal. 
<laughs> because of some of the things I've done, I think. And, and then I, you know, but, I'm in, but I'm not in, let's have fun mode. I'm in wrestle with God. Like, why did you do that? Why didn't you just heal the guy? Why didn't you just say the word? What, why, why the humiliation? Why the drama? And I began, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, reread the story. And I started reading the story, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. John makes a point of the fact that the man was born blind. And John recounts that they, all the disciples connected his born blindness to his sin or his parents' sin. And I'm like, oh, wait a second, I get it. This man is born blind. And see, in the old covenant, thank God we're in the new one, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses verse 1 through 14, God says, listen, if you serve me, here's all the blessings. You know, you'll have lots of kids and your cattle will, you know, will get fat and you're, you know, you won't. <laughs> It'll rain. <laughs> you, you know, just whatever. It'll, it's, you're just blessed. It's 14 verses of, you want to see what it looks like to be blessed? Just try me. From, but from verse 15 to verse 68, God goes, if you serve other gods, these are the curses that will come on your life. In verse 28 of chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, it says, and your children will be born blind. When a Jewish person in the old covenant saw, a, let's just say a little boy even, his mother has him by the hand. He's walking down the street and the boy is born blind. And of course, in American culture, you see a blind person, a blind man, even a blind child, you have compassion on them, right? It's just a natural thing. All over the world, we have compassion on people who have some kind of disability. But in Jewish custom, if you saw somebody with one of those cursed, you know, 50 verses of curses for serving other gods, this little boy, he's walking down the street, and what do you think people did? They spit on him. You know why? Because the people would be saying, we agree with God. You deserve to be cursed. You served other gods and we hate you because we love God. What did Jesus do? He took the thing. See, I think when, I think when, when Jesus went and the guy standing in front of him, I don't think he stood there. I think that he's been spit on since he was a little boy. I think he ducks. I, I don't know if he thinks it's Jesus, but I think he ducks. I think he thinks it's coming from over there. I think he covers his face. And suddenly he realizes it's the master who just spit on me. And what happens? Jesus used the thing that cursed him his whole life. <laughs> to heal him so that the boy the young man will walk and leap and praise God. He restored him physically. He restored him emotionally. He restored him spiritually. Why? Because God wants a holistic, God wants us to be whole, not just well.